remember not to write all your math papers and ink Remember to show all your work if you don't wanna see Remember to test day and prepare for it holy Because if you don't, then you'll perform poorly Hey guys, let's go over 1.59 Writing write functions in vertex form Let's go black uh, How do I do that? Try something different. Okay, so the main thing I need to teach you about is a third form, so put a big star by it, is something called vertex form. Of quadratics. We've already looked at standard form. which was uh, ax squared plus bx plus c. You guys remember that? We also learned uh, partially about factored form, factored, um, where you have a tells you it opens up or down, and then you just factor it. And those tell us the x-intercepts. I like a description to a uh, foldable that you can create that kind of summarizes all of the three forms. And then we have this third form here called vertex form. Vertex form is written in the form of y equals a times x minus h squared plus k. And the big idea is that the h and the k form an order pair, and this order pair is called the vertex. And what is a vertex? So you have a graph here. And the vertex is this specific point. Let's change the color. That's what the vertex is. It's that little point right there. How is that different from the other forms? <clears throat> this one has one set of parentheses. Um, we're going to have to use the square root method and complete the square to do that. So let's do this with me. Let's do a problem. The directions for uh, 44 to 49 tell us um, basically when you get into vertex form, find the axis of symmetry, then find the vertex or the order pair, and determine if it's a max or a minimum. Okay, so we have y equals negative x squared minus 12x minus 9. You'll recognize that you cannot factor that. And so what we're going to do is we're going to take parentheses around here. Now normally we would add 9 to both sides and then complete the square and we're essentially doing the same thing. So CTS. Uh, we're going to take the B value, take it in half, and square it. So my B value is inside the blue here is negative 12. Which is negative 12 divided by 2 is negative 6 and you square that, you'll get 36. So this is the C value. Now pay attention. Normally we would write, um, we would write the C value on both sides. Essentially you are doing that. So I have plus 36. Okay, pay attention here. And you have to do minus 36. The reason why you do minus 36 is if you add 36 and you subtract 36, it's zero. So the equation doesn't change. Now, why is it negative? Because let's say you wanted to move that 36 to the other side, it would look like that, right? That's what you would have normally have done. You would have added the C value to both sides of the equation. Um, But um, 
It's just easier to work on one side of the equation because it already says y equals so that it's a function or equation. Okay, let's erase this. It's saving image, which stalls my iPad. Okay, now within Within the parentheses here, we can go ahead and factor this. Now, a nice way to uh, change that is to just uh, factor out a GCF of a negative one. That way when you're factoring, your A is positive, which makes it easier. So it becomes x squared plus 12x uh, minus, oops, that should be an x minus 36. So all the math operations change and then you can just put negative 45 over here. Okay, let's now factor this one. You guys like the black background? I usually like working on this, but I wanted you guys to see the color coding. A times C inside that orange one there is a, B, C, so negative 36, B value is 12, my two values are going to be uh, negative 6. Okay, so remember the original problem inside there um, is right here. And then you have this one, and this one. And then if I just factor this, x, negative 6, go in this direction is x, and this direction is negative 6. Okay, so we have negative 1 times x minus 6 squared minus 45. Okay, so this is, I'm going to box it because this is called... Um, Let's get a different color here. This is um, vertex form. Okay. The next thing I want to do is actually find the vertex. And to do that, I always like to write the formula right next to it, underneath it. Now this one's nice because um, this one already has a negative in it. That's going to confuse students. So my h value is 6. And my k value is negative 45. So this is actually the vertex. OK? So let's, uh, what have we done so far? Um, we complete this right in vertex form. Okay, we need to get the axis of symmetry. We found the vertex and we need to determine the maximum minimum. So let's just go ahead and graph this really quickly. Okay, I'm going to graph 6, negative 45. 6, negative 45 is right 6, down negative 45. 6, negative 45. That is my V for vertex, okay? Um, if we have not pointed it out, the A value tells us if it opens up or down. So A is negative, and this is a negative value, right? Because one is negative. So what do negative people do? They frown or sad face. So the graph's actually gonna look like this. Whoa, not that. Whoa, come back. I should have just done it as one. Eh, it's okay. So is this a maximum or a minimum? That pink one is a max. Okay, what is the axis of symmetry? Axis of symmetry. Well, the axis of symmetry is right here. We would write x equals 6. Okay, why is that the case? Um, you can see that it's going to fold my parabola in half. Does that make sense? That's what an axis of symmetry does. It has an equation x equals 6. So any ordered pair 
that you write on this line, 1, 6, 2, 6, 3, 6. I'm sorry, I misspoke. 6, 3, 6, 5, all the x values are 6. So that is our axis of symmetry, okay? So basically you're gonna do that for each of the problems here. Um, same thing, so we've done this one. Um, complete three, so you get to uh, skip three problems, okay? All right, let's go over number 44. Saving image. Okay, let's draw an e down my equal sign. And uh, the first thing is, I cannot factor this, but I want to put it into vertex form, which means I need to complete the square. So, y equals x squared plus 2x, and you can just kind of create a lot of space right here. Oops, I did it again. And we're going to complete the square inside this parentheses here. So my B value there is two. And that will become uh, one, one squared. So I'm gonna add this C value to both. Okay, pay attention now. This one is gonna be a positive one, and this one's a negative one, right? I can't just um, go to my, um, can't go to a college bank and say, hey, I need to borrow $100,000, and they just give you $100,000. Well, eventually over time, you're gonna pay back the $100,000, so negative 100,000 plus 100,000 equals zero. Zero does not change it, right? It means you owe nothing, you're out of debt. Okay, so then here, I'm going to factor this. So A, B, C, easy as one, two, three. Okay, what two numbers? And remember, you can always go back up here. And this is splitting two X, so you have to add an X. So this will be one X, one X. Um, you have X squared and positive one always goes the c value always goes in the bottom right and then we just take out the greatest common factor and um so go x one x and one so x plus one x plus one x plus one squared and then you have the minus six i'm gonna box this one this is an answer for us this is vertex form. Okay, now I need to transform this into, um, to find the vertex itself. Okay, pay attention. I'm going to take the positive and make it two negatives. Kind of going backwards in some ways. Why am I doing this? So that when I take vertex form, the formula has a negative. Do you see that? X minus H. And then we can do a couple of things like this. What is my A value? Well, there's no number out there. A is equal to one. Is one, um, there po if A is positive or negative? It's positive, so happy, positive people, smile. The problem is gonna open up. Okay, I'm gonna highlight this one here. The formula has a negative sign. So in this case, my H value is negative one. And my K value, whatever's on the outside, negative six. So this is my vertex. Okay. Okay, let's just quickly graph it and then you can kind of get an idea what it looks like. Left one, down six. Um, left one, down six, and it opens up. So your graph might look like this.
Okay, so if it is opening up, then that pink dot is a minimum or a maximum. Is it the highest point or the lowest point? It is a minimum. Okay. And then the axis of symmetry is just this value right here. Axis of symmetry, x equals negative 1. Okay, that's how the graph's going to fold in half. So that's the advantage of the vertex form. Number 45. It's saving image. And I'm going to move it over. CTS, complete and square, here's my B value, <coughs> so that becomes 3, 3 squared is 9. Okay, remember I'm going to add that to, remember the difference was we used to add that to both sides of the equations, you can do that, it's essentially the same. Um, but we want those add equals zero. So those in the highlighted white there, you know, if you move the negative nine to the left side of the pink line, that would essentially just be nine and nine on both sides. That's still property of equality. It's balanced. That's the main idea. Okay, let's go ahead and factor this one. So I have A, B, C. My two numbers are going to be 3, <coughs> 3x. And always put x squared in the top left. Bottom right will always be the C value, which is 9. And then we just take out the greatest common factor. x, 3, x, 3. So y equals x plus 3 squared minus 8. This is vertex form. Notice how it has one set of parentheses. I'll box that. Okay, let's transform this now into vertex. To find the vertex, h and k. To do that, I'm going to change the minus sign to two pluses. And why am I doing this is because the math gods have decided that in the formula it has a minus sign. So I can say A is what number? 1 is positive and because the 1 is positive and what does the graph do? Well it opens happy people smile, right? Okay, pay attention here. I'll highlight it for you. There must be a negative in the formula. That is why h is negative 3. And k value is negative 8. Okay, this is our vertex. Put v for vertex. Okay, and if we graph this, Negative 3, negative 8 is left 3, down 8. So something like that. And um, it's opening up because of positive people. So our vertex, is it a low point or high point of the skate ramp? It is a minimum. And then the last one is the axis of symmetry, which is just this value. <coughs> X equals negative 3. So, if you think about it, the axis of symmetry goes through the vertex. The axis of symmetry goes through the vertex. The vertex is on the axis of symmetry. 
it's a line where you fold your taco pizza in half. Number 46. Let's kind of separate this one here. Put the two over here. And I'm going to factor out a negative one. So this will read y equals x squared minus 4x. We're changing all the math operations inside. This two doesn't, we didn't factor out a negative one from there. Okay, let's go ahead and complete the square. It's saving image, so. CTS, so B over 2 squared, and my B value inside there is negative 4. So negative 4 divided by 2 is negative 2, negative 2 squared is 4, my C value is 4. Those spaces that I'm going to write a number, they must add to equal 0. Positive 4 and negative 4 add to 0. Basically, it makes your equation balanced. Okay, now we're going to factor this. Have you seen the shortcut yet? Should I tell you the shortcut of factoring? Did you recognize the patterns? A, B, and C. 4, negative 4. All right, I'm going to tell you. What are my two numbers? Um, negative 2. Negative 2 times negative 2 is positive 4. Negative 2 plus negative 2 is minus 4. Huh! A value is 1, so do I even need to fill out the box? Hmm. Let's test it. Let us test it. x squared, positive 4, and take the greatest common factor, you're going to get x, negative 2, x, and negative 2. Oh, that is interesting. When a value is 1, I just need to do the x. When the a value is, na um, when a is 1, I don't need to use the box. The box is when you have to use the x and the box when a is greater than 1. Hmm, hmm, have you noticed that? I waited lots of lessons because I wanted you to see a pattern. I want you to appreciate not just me giving you the shortcut. Okay. Here is vertex form. Let's go ahead and write the formula underneath it. I do this every time. Me, a math teacher, I do it all the time. Okay, so da, 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 da. don't include that negative sign. H is 2, K is negative 2. And uh, a is negative 1. So here's my vertex. Let's graph that. Um, right 2 down 2. There is your vertex to negative 2. And then it's opening down. So is that a minimum or a maximum? Go on, is it supreme scream at knots? That would be a max, okay? And then your last one is the axis of symmetry. Just take that number, every x value is gonna be two, and it folds your graph in half, okay? All right, let's go to number 47. Let's put 
put that in parentheses and move this one over. I'm going to factor out a negative 1 from just the parentheses. So now you take everything that's the opposite sign, so x squared plus 8x um, minus 5. And now we're going to complete the square. So b over 2 squared, my b value is inside the parentheses, that's what I'm focusing on, the parentheses. So that would be saving image, and it does that periodically, so I'm telling you if you don't see it. 8 over 2 squared, so that would be 4 squared, which is 16. saving image. Okay, so this goes now on both sides. 16, and this one is negative 16. Ooh, 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 it cannot be. And I know why. If you distribute weird. I'm going to distribute going under. Negative 1x squared. Negative 8x. Pay attention. That would be negative 16. And so if I'm doing negative 16 and positive 16, um, that would be wrong. So I think I messed up on 46. Let's double check. Uh-oh. Maybe I messed up on the original one too. Da, 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 da. Mm -hmm. Oh, I did it. I know why. Let's see. Yeah, I messed up. Let's see. Do you see how you have to recognize if you distribute there? Yeah, I messed up. At least I caught my mistake. Most important. Okay, so... This one if you distribute that negative one, this should be a positive thirty-six. Because really what you're doing, this is this is what I remember. Um, if you do if you kind of distribute but previously, negative x squared minus twelve x positive 36 and you can't add a 36 there does that make sense because then you're adding two 36s and they should add to equal zero let me say that again and i'm going to highlight it this right here should equal zero okay so what does that mean that means that um, this is going to be a positive 36, so this one should be a negative. Wait, negative times negative is positive, negative. So really this is a positive 36. Yeah, yeah. Uh, nope, nope, nope. Negative. I want that to be a negative. Okay, so let's review what happened. Plus 27, plus 27, 
plus 27. just be above. And on this one, let's go back up to 46. All right, so what helps me do this part, and I'm glad I caught my mistake, is, let's do a different color, distribute. And you can kind of see what happens. Negative 1x squared plus 4x and this should not be a uh, I want it to be a positive 4 because if I factor out a negative I get minus 2 Nope, not yet. So, sorry, trying to change pink colors. So if I'm really adding a negative four, then that one has to be positive four. So, let's double check, six. Checking my answer. So that should be two comma oops. Six. Six. No negative. Two comma six. Two comma six. And now we know So keep that number the same. Let's keep that number the same. Negative so if I distribute, that would be negative 1x squared plus 8x uh, minus 16. And so I want that to be a plus 16. So let's keep the number the same when it's a negative. A little tricky, huh? Okay, so what does that tell us? If you factor that one, inside the parentheses, you have 16 eight and then um, minus four minus four positive four positive four plus eleven <coughs> and that is my vertex form and then I'm going to rewrite it so we can get changing the plus sign to two negatives and the reason why I'm doing that for number 47 is so that I can write the formula right underneath it. And then I can extract the information. A is negative 1, so negative people frown. Pay attention, the formula has a negative sign, so your H value is negative 4, K value is 11. So that is my vertex. Let's graph that. Excuse me. Negative four, go left four on the x-axis, then up on 11. So graph's gonna look like that. And this is gonna be a maximum, maximum. Okay, that's two messages, to write some Mr. and come on. And then our axis of symmetry, AOS. It's 
negative 4. Cuts our graph in half. Okay? So, this is your vertex. It is a maximum, and then the axis of symmetry is the white line. Um, it folds our parabola in half. Number 48. Let's just put that in parentheses. All right, what I'm going to do there here is I'm going to factor out a 2. So I have x squared plus 2x. And then we're going to complete the square. So my b value is 2. Oh, OK. Watch this. Let's see. which gives us one. Okay, now pay attention. If I put plus one here, distribute, and you'll get two. Saving image. Two x squared plus four x plus two. Are you seeing what I'm trying to point out? So I can't put plus one on both sides. This is a positive two. So that means I'm gonna put a negative two out there. Let me explain one more time. If you distribute, you kind of get this in-between step between the blue and the white. And so your temptation is to add one to both sides because it's a C value. But we factored out a 2, and if you multiply there in orange, you will get 2x squared plus 4x plus 2. So essentially what I'm doing is I'm adding um, 2 and subtracting 2 so that it equals 0. I know that was a lot. Okay, so let's clean this up. y equals 2 times, oh we didn't factor. In the parentheses, in the parentheses. A times C is 1, B value is 2, so it's 1 and 1. That'll become x plus 1, x plus 1 squared. Are you guys getting the trick? Right there. Because this is going to be the same thing when you do the box method. I would say for students who don't understand factoring well, just keep using the x in the box, x in the box, x in the box. Right? Dum, bum, ba dum. x squared, 1x, 1x plus one and you'll realize that it's okay and then plus one and then let's go ahead and change that with a negative sign and then write the formula and get our h and our k's and a's a is two positive it's going to open up H negative one K one. Okay, so where is my vertex? Left one, up one. There it is, and it's grabbed up. So that means that this will be a minimum. The orange dot on the parabola is the lowest point and x equals negative 1. All right, number 49. Space it out. I'm going to factor out a 3. I'm going to complete the square. 
my b value inside the parentheses is 2. So that gives us 1 squared, which is 1. Okay, so pay attention now. I need to put in 1 inside. But do I put 1 on to the right? Well, you can distribute your answer and see what happens. So really, that is 3x squared plus 6x plus 3. So that actually has to be a minus 3. Because remember, you don't want to change an equation. You can add 0 to it. So it looks different with the uh, blue and the green, but when you go back up to the green step, in, in between sandwich, in between the white and the pink, you'll recognize that it's a positive 3 and negative 3 to complete the square for this problem. I know, mind-boggling. Okay. A times C inside the parentheses is 1, 2, two numbers are 1 and 1. And the shortcut is you don't have to do the box because it would just be x plus 1, x plus 1. If you don't know that, you want to do the box, you want to do the box. Sure, we do the box. And you get x plus 1, x plus 1. Okay, so here is vertex form. You'll notice that has one set of parentheses. You don't have to use foil or expand it. And um, I'm going to change the plus to a minus. And the reason why I did that is because the formula has a minus sign. What? This is plus 4. Minus 4. And then I'm going to highlight y because it has to have a negative sign. So a is positive. That means it's going to open up. Positive people smile. h value is negative 1. k value is negative 4. And that is our graph it, give yourself visual, um, left 1, down 4, there's negative 1, negative 4, just really conceptual, graphs up, and therefore we know that this is a minimum, and uh, this is your axis of symmetry, x equals negative 1. Okay, um, that was writing functions in vertex form. We'll see you guys.